Hey guys, uh, welcome to my Age of Empires 4 Ultimate Beginner's Guide. Um, this is going to be a demonstration that goes along with a text guide that I will be linking in a Google Doc and that will be in the video description. So check out the text guide. It's a lot of information, it's a lot of text, it's a lot to read, but Age of Empires 4 is a very complicated game. So if you want to get higher in the ranks of multiplayer, there's a lot of stuff to learn. And um, you can read it just a little bit at a time. You can keep it pulled up on another monitor as you play, and you can always refer back to it after a loss and see maybe uh, some maybe see things that you did wrong and learn how to improve. So check it out. I will post that in the video description, and uh, I will get started with the demonstration now. Thanks for watching. Guys, here we go. I will now play a game against AI that shows you how I like to play multiplayer matches as French. I'm going to play against AI because otherwise I won't be able to talk about everything I'm doing and give you the details about the mechanics. So if I was trying to do that in a live game, I would lose, I promise. Um, I'm going to play against English. I'll put it on the hardest difficulty, but that doesn't mean too much um, when you use the right strategies. And um, yeah, I'm going to play as French, but even if you plan to play a different Civ, I would advise watching this demonstration because I'm going to show you how to recognize and build your advantage, how to know what your opponent is doing, how to safely and effectively end the game without allow allowing your opponent the opportunity to come back into the game. And I will also be demonstrating many important game mechanics and hotkeys. Um, we are going to play against English on... Uh, we'll just do Lipany. Uh, it's a map you'll play on all the time if you if you queue ranked. So, and uh, teams together. This is how a ranked game would spawn with teams together. Um, I'm gonna turn on this. No, we're good. Yep. So as French, like I said, this is only going to apply to you if you play French. Um, if you want to play a different sieve, you should look up the build order for that sieve. But um, as far as my build order on French goes, I like to start with 8 on food. Um, and I like to go 4 on gold after that, and then start moving villagers to wood. Um, this allows you to age up really quickly to the fuel age. And um, yeah, I always start with the second scout, as I mentioned before, to get as much sheep as I can. Sheep are super valuable for the early game economy. Alright guys, I'm going to get started, and I might pause throughout just to add uh, information about what I'm doing. So the first thing I'll do is put all my villagers onto the sheep. I will control command uh, my scout to the number one. So let's talk about that for a second. What I did was I highlighted my scout, and I pressed... Wow, how do you even do it? It's, it's so natural at this point. Um, I think you press shift plus, no, if you don't press shift, you just press put, hold control and press one. And, um, that assigns your scout to the number one. So every time you click on the one key from now on, it will pull up your scout. If you double tap the one key, the screen will jump to where your scout is currently on the map. It is super useful for moving from one place to the other because you can double tap one and shift your screen to where the scout is and you can assign your town center a number and double tap that number to go back to your town center so you'll notice i always assign my town center to four and i assign my first scout to one my second scout to two and then later i'll take uh use the one and two commands for army So what do you want to do with your scouts? You want to send them to get as many sheep as you can and bring them back. And you also want to scout what your opponent is doing. You'll notice right now I'm building a house with this villager and queuing it back onto food. Let's talk about shift queue commands. This is why we're playing against AI, so we can talk about everything. I just did several things there when I built that house with that villager. First, I used a hotkey to build the house so that I clicked on the villager then I press Q and Q again, and that pulls up a, ho a hotkey for a house. When you press Q the first time, it pulls up a building hotkey, and then each different type of building has a, a hotkey. So Q is for house, W is for mill, 
E is for lumber camp, R is for mining camp, and uh, from there, I don't have all of them memorized. It just becomes natural the more you use hotkeys. Hotkeys will help you play the game faster and build up more APM. So, what is APM? APM is actions per minute. So I build the house, and then I use the shift button to cue the villager to go back onto food gathering afterwards. So what that means is I command him to build the house by just clicking the house down onto the ground, and then I press shift and click onto the food. And that means that when the villager is done building the house, he automatically goes back onto the food. And you see I just double tapped one and switched to the scout. We'll go ahead and bring these sheep back to make sure we don't run out of sheep. And with our other scout on two, we will just go deep into the enemy territory to look for sheep. And I just assigned my town center to four. And we'll leave the sheep here and go get more. And um, we're looking for eight villagers on food now. We've got it. So next we're going to go on to gold. And... Um, you can set a rally point for the next resource by clicking on it with the right button. So you click on your town center, and then when you right click, it means your um, your units will automatically start gathering that resource. So your workers will automatically start gathering the gold. Now look, if I click here, the line is yellow. That means they won't be gathering a resource, but when I click on the gold, it's blue. So that means they will start gathering the gold when they see it. Let's gather some more sheep. Right now, I'm aiming to get four onto the gold. And the goal right now is just to get to Feudal Age as soon as possible. Um, occasionally, you may run into people making Dark Age units, um, especially if they're playing Mongols, but most of the time you're not going to have to worry about that. Um, if you have are having trouble dealing with stuff like that, there's specific YouTube videos out there for that. Now that we have four on the gold, we are going to uh, start queuing villagers onto the wood here. Um, and we will build a lumber camp. And the moment we have enough food to age up, we're going to age up as soon as we can. Or enough food and gold to age up. So, we'll take four villagers to build the landmark. And I'll have them build the School of Cavalry as the first landmark for the um, French. Now, why School of Cavalry? Well, the other landmark sucks. Um, it is a trading landmark. Um, trading is extremely exposed, um, and most of the time, you're not going to be able to protect it, so your opponent will just um, attack your traders and kill them. They're very expensive. So with the French, it's better to just go ahead and go School of Cavalry, which lets you get out knights right away as soon as the um, Feudal Age hits. Whereas most unit, most of civs don't even have early knights, and they would have to wait on the Feudal Age to hit, then build a stable before they can start building uh, units. You will have a unit you will have a military production building ready as soon as Feudal Age hits. So right now we're going to get five villagers on food again. And uh, you see my villager production stop for a second? It's not good, but uh, it happens sometimes. Um, try to get it going as soon as possible. I like to, let's talk about hotkeys for Town Center as well. I have a gaming mouse, many of you. Um, might have gaming mouses as well, and I have some buttons on my gaming mouse. So I assigned um, my town center to be pulled up when I click on the mouse button, and that way I can always pull up my town center and queue a villager no matter what I'm doing. Even if I'm over here, I press my mouse button, pull up the town center, and I can queue a villager. And look, we have two villagers in the queue right here. So the goal right now is to get some more villagers on wood, get to the second age, and we're going to grab that important um, economic upgrade known as wheelbarrow. I talked about it briefly earlier. Um, it is the most important economic upgrade in the game. And 
unless you're playing Abbasid and then you need fresh food stuffs, but you know. In general, wheelbarrow is what you need. We'll grab that immediately, and we need a house. So I forgot to build my house for a second. And you do not want to get production blocked, so I'm going to go ahead and queue three villagers to build the house to make sure I don't get my production blocked. You can see um, the house finished, and um, I, my next villager just popped right out. Alright, so now the goal is to get um, more villagers onto food and get out a knight. You want to get out a knight and start harassing as French as early as possible to gain an early economic advantage over your opponent. So I'm sending my scouts forward to check out where I should harass, and I'm queuing my first knight to spawn out here. Now, um, once again, let's talk about how some of this works. So I can click on this building and click where I want my knight to go when he, when he comes out of the building. You can also shift queue that. So if I want him to run here first and then go here, you'll hold down shift and keep right clicking and now he'll do a crazy little dance when he comes out so that's how that works I didn't know that until very recently um, and it's crazy I've played the game this long without knowing that once you get to 13 on food with French again um, it's time to go ahead and get some more wood going and uh, you want to get down a blacksmith as early as possible the French get um, access to a uh, Military, a free military upgrade that does more damage for their knights, uh, for their melee units in general. You notice I'm already building the house to make sure I don't get production blocked. Getting production blocked is really bad. So, let's harass with this knight. Ideally, you want to do this a little earlier than I'm even doing it right now, but I'm focusing on, you know, providing instruction as well, so. Um, this game is not going to give you a good demonstration of what it would be like to play against a real person because this is an AI. So it's important to note that just pay attention to what I'm talking about. Don't pay much attention to what this AI is doing because it is an AI. So um, I've come out here and I see some exposed villagers. Let's try to get a kill with the knight. Look at that. I got one kill. I got two kills. Wow, and he's not reacting. So that is not what's going to happen in a real game. In a real game, you um, your opponent is probably going to react to the raid. But now that I've killed two villagers, I know that I have an economic advantage. Villagers um, are produced quicker from the French. And um, they also... Well, yeah, the French produce villagers at 17 seconds, and other civs produce them... 20 seconds um, it takes 20 seconds for each bill so the fact that I just killed two villagers with the knight that means you are ahead um, and he's gonna need to catch up now like at the highest level the game might even be like close to over but it's never gonna work like that in your league in the lower leagues you can always make a comeback so just because you lost two villagers if you were playing English in this situation that doesn't mean you should give up but if you kill two villagers for free like that, as a French player, you should feel confident about your position, and you should look to do more damage. So, we're going to assume that I'm playing against a really good player, and they're getting out spears to defend against my knight. I got two villager kills, but they're getting out spears right now to defend against my knight. So what is the next step? The next step is to put down archery ranges to attack their spears and protect your knights. So... Let's get some archery ranges down. You see I dropped my first archery range. And um, I have enough resources to drop another archery range and also still produce plenty of archers. So I'm going to go ahead and drop another archery range. I'm also going to grab this double broadaxe upgrade as I'm hitting 10 villagers on wood and I'll have more than that soon. Then I'm going to shift Q uh, my archers to, well not shift queue, but I'm going to queue my archers to spawn down here closer to the enemy's base. And uh, I'm going to try to get another villager kill while I wait on that. Bon, 
You can see, um, I didn't get a kill, but he backed his villagers off of the food, and he's sending some archers out to defend my army. So what do you do to make sure that your military stays alive while you're not paying attention to them? Get them out of range of the TC, get them out of range of where he's likely to attack, and use the V command, stand ground. This command is so helpful. It makes sure that your units aren't going to wander into some attack and die. If the archers show up right here, and there's 40 of them, and you have these three units right here, they won't run straight into it. You can at least hear the attack and maybe move your knight away and save him. Um, you can also, if he were to build a keep right here and the keep starts attacking your units, they won't just run into the keep and die because you have them on stand ground. You want to use this command all the time. For example, let's check out where this opponent is mining gold. And by the way, right now I'm spawning archers across the map to come here. Um, so, And uh, we're hitting too many villagers on, on wood now, so we're going to start going to gold and then back onto food so that we can hit the next age. And uh, we're also going to go onto stone so that we can get another town center and extend our lead. So let's talk about the position we're in. We have killed, uh, managed to kill villagers without... Um, losing any knights, which is really good. You don't want to lose your knights, because they heal for free, and they can go back to full health with an upgrade called Chivalry. So, it's important not to lose your knights as French, and it's important to get out those archers to defend against the spears, and to keep putting up aggression. Um, you can even start building almost like a forward base with towers, and just keeping your military in a threatening position near your opponent's base. Not where you're going to lose them, but where you can protect them, where you can safely harass, where you can get vision. So I will move a villager forward to get towers. I will also start going onto stone to gather for my second town center. And um, focusing on getting to the third age behind that as well. So I'm going to be doing a lot of things at once. That's why I went ahead and paused this so that I could tell you what's going on. I'm going to build a tower right here for some vision. We're going to see what he's doing on the gold right here. And guys, if you're not able to do all of these things at once, that's understandable. Um, it will come with time. As you play the game more and more, you'll be able to focus on uh, actually doing things with your military while also um, building up your economy. So you can see he's got villagers all over the map. This is not typical. You're not going to see this often from uh, real players. He's already got villagers all over the map this early in the game. But I think it's just how the AI is reacting to my aggression. So um, we're going to get out a bunch more archers here, and we are going to get onto the stone. We're going to start gathering stone to get our second TC. We only need 300 stone. We're going to assume I have a couple damage knights now as well. Once you have a couple damage knights, you want to take them somewhere safe where they can heal. Grab this chivalry upgrade so they start healing. Another thing I want to talk about real quick, guys, is you can set specific hotkeys for each of your military production buildings within the settings, and that is something you should think about doing. Personally, I have... Um, my military buildings, each one set to zero uh, specific number between seven, eight, nine, and zero. But you can also just pull up, use the hotkey to pull up all the military buildings. Then you can tab between them using the tab key. So that's personal preference on how you want to play the game, how you want to use your hotkeys. Um, it's definitely something to think about. So you can see now we've got a tower down and we've got some vision at his base while we're just pumping out units down here. So we're going to use our archers to attack uh, right here and kill another villager. And uh, we don't have to get greedy. As long as we're still killing villagers, denying resources, and uh, preventing our opponent from building a strong economy, we're doing a good job. Um, now you could choose here to go for rams and just end the game, and that might work at a lot of lower levels. But personally, at my level, I've found playing against English, it's hard to use rams. So you're going to see me instead go for a strong castle age push where I use trebuchets to take out his base. Um, it can be hard to use rams against English because their town center 
literally is like a machine gun with arrows, and it destroys rams. Rams can also be easily destroyed by military and villagers, so... We're just going to keep making some units because we have plenty of resources right now. At this point, it might be time to get another stable as well. Where we can uh, make more knights. Because you see, I just have the one stable, which is my landmark. And to be fair, I'm, I'm actually going to make two more stables. So, so we want lots of knights. See, this is, this is what I was talking about in the guide earlier when I was saying that you want to slowly add more and more military production. And once you've got a couple uh, towers down, provision, you can even just start having your villager gather some resources up here. You can be cheeky. You can take this gold. This gold is yours. You have military to defend it. it recognizing your position is really important. So um, I'm not doing the best in terms of resource spending and uh, efficiency right now. As you can see, I have plenty of resources floating. But um, yeah, that's just part of trying to do a guide at the same time. Now you can see here, he's built up a large mass of archers and um, a couple spearmen. Because he is the hardest AI, so he does know how to build units. What we're going to need to stop this is a bunch of knights. So... In order to defend against this aggression, or his defensive response, I'm going to pull back my army right now, and I'm going to get a few more knights out to defend it, to defeat his army, and then we're going to push his army and destroy it. So let's pull back a little bit, just to be safe, because that is a large force, and uh, we don't have a lot of knights here, but we will have a lot of knights here very shortly. Once I have a couple more knights, I'm just going to attack this. So... We're going to send this villager home to be free. And uh, it's time to start getting more villagers on food. So as the French, you have map control. You're being aggressive. You're taking control of the map, right? So it's important to take control of the resources on the map as the French and spread out to the different resources the map offers you. If you start building farms too early, it will cut into your military production. Eventually, you are going to want farms, but it's... Um, yeah, it's not viable to go for farms super early. So, you can see I'm getting my second town center down to boost my economy. And that's just to extend your lead. Um, let's talk about second town centers for a second. If you are playing against your opponent and you see them put down a second town center, it's time to either respond with one of your own or get very aggressive. Because if your opponent plays for a while with a second town center and you only have one, their economy is going to be better than yours and they will probably overpower you eventually. So it is important to match economy with economy or to play aggressively against greedy players who are going for uh, too many town centers. And um, yeah, it's just something you will learn with experience. So we've got our second town center going down right now, and we've got a bunch of knights queuing here. And you can see I'm making a mistake. I'm queuing archers to die. Um, but you can see now, I have a pretty comfortable group of knights, so we're going to go attack these archers. And uh, we'll bring my archers in too to help. And you can just attack move. And that's the simplest way to do it, because um, ooh, we're also going to want to get that range defense upgrade. We forgot to get it, so we'll get that right now to protect against these archers. But, um, yeah. You want to uh, just use the attack move in this situation because you want your knights to attack, spread out their attacks among the units in the best way possible. So after you want to fight like that comfortably, you should feel ahead and you should be um, prepared to be aggressive. So we're going to head into Castle Age um, as soon as possible at this point and look to push our advantage. We're going to grab a few more upgrades along the way. Upgrade our archers, upgrade our um, defense. So, we're also going to get down a few more production buildings for increased production in the next age. And we'll start farming a little bit since we have extra wood. And uh, we're going to move some of these villagers off of wood because we have too much right now. We just want to get this food and gold for Castle Age as soon as possible at this point. And we want to end the game because we have a big lead after that fight. 
At this point, you can even, while you're doing this, working on getting to Castle Age, you can move in with your knights. Which, by the way, you'll notice this one's healing now, because I got the healing upgrade chivalry from the stable. Oh, and I had more knights here the whole time, that's funny. So, um, yeah, we'll just look to keep our advantage up while we're working to age up. And he's building some men at arms and some horsemen, um, neither of which are too threatening right now. So I'm just going to back up a little bit. I was looking to do some military, uh, some economic damage, but I'm not going to uh, be able to at this moment. So let's age up. What landmark should you use with the French? Well, generally, if you want to end the game in Castle Age like we want to right now, you will go with the Royal Institute. And you'll notice I'm I'm constantly changing my commands. If I want to control my archers with one, I do it. If I want to control my knights with two, I do it. So this allows you to move over the battlefield constantly. And that can be dizzying for new players, but it's something to get used to if you want to play at a competitive level. You can see he's starting to gather stone now. But um it is the AI, he's not doing it super effectively. So how do we end the game from here? Well, you first of all, you don't want to get too greedy and lose the game by trying to end it too aggressively without also building your economy. So since we hit Castle Age, it's a good idea to get down a monastery and grab all of the relics. These relics give you free gold, and it really builds up over the course of the game because it gives you gold per minute. So if you grab all five, you are putting yourself in a really good long-term position just in case he's able to fend off your next push. So we're going to build a monastery and start getting the relics. We're also going to build a forward keep and start pushing into the base to end the game. So we're looking to get 800 stone right now for the forward keep. And we're looking to get a monastery down to start getting the relics. And we also want to get a few more villagers on gold. So you see I queue one town center to go on to gold and I queue one town center to go on to stone. By the way, I have select all town centers on my mouse button, so I can queue villagers from both of them at the same time. We're going to put down a few more, um, I'm going to put down a siege workshop or two so we can get some siege in just a moment and another stable. And then we're going to um, go ahead and queue a few more villagers onto wood as well so that we can build plenty of siege. In the Royal Institute, uh, we'll get the uh, relics going first from the monastery. So you queue a monk, you pick up the relic, and then you bring it back to your monastery. Um, in the Royal Institute, you want to go ahead and get these upgrades for your knights as soon as possible. So Royal Bloodlines is the best one. We're going to go for that first. You also want to get the upgrade to Veteran from your stables. So we're going to get that. And then we're going to get Royal Bloodlines as soon as it's available. If you find you're floating too much resources, like right now I have too much food. So we're going to build a market, and that way we can sell food to get other resources. And we're going to back up from this fight, because I have upgrades coming in that are really massive for my units. Once those upgrades come in, we'll just take the fight after that. And uh, he's going to try to destroy some of the stuff, like the forward base, but it's not going to matter soon. We have lots more knights coming in with lots of upgrades coming onto those knights. So we've grabbed our first relic. We'll take it back to the monastery. And uh, we'll make sure our new monk goes to a different relic. And we have enough um, stone for our forward keep. We'll build our first forward keep right here for a staging grounds for our attack. At this point in the game, if you're playing against a strong opponent, you might want to watch out for raids in your base because they will be trying to come back into the game 
So a good thing to do would be to build some stone walls or wood walls around your base. Just for safety. I'm not going to bother to do it against the AI, but it is something you could do in your games. We're going to grab all these upgrades for the um, knights. And uh, we're going to sell some food because we have tons of it. And uh, that way I can get the royal bloodlines. Maybe sell a little more food because we still have tons of it. And we can get the cantled saddles. You should just get all these knights upgrades because they are all good. So the first forward keep is going down. And um, from here you just want to get a bunch of units out and get a bunch of siege out and end the game. So you can build a tower. Um, to gain more vision in front of this as well, once we have the wood. We'll get the upgrade for our archers as well. We can even get arbaletriers, which are just the French crossbows, their special unit. And um, that will help against the men-at-arms. take this boar right here with our villagers, which is a really good food source. And uh, we are about to end the game, guys. It's coming. Our next goal is to get trebuchets out and uh, start pushing with our army. So we're going to go ahead and kick the enemy while he's down, check out what's going on with our knights. Our knights are really powerful at this point after the upgrades we got from them. And we're going to draw the enemy's army back to our keep where we can fight and get a bunch of extra damage from our keep. And uh, you can get these emplacements on your keep, and um, that will let you do even more damage with them. It's time to get the trebuchets out. We're getting two trebuchets out right now to start sieging down the opponent's base. How do you protect, protect your trebuchets? Well, the best way is generally with spearmen. So we're going to get some spearmen out as well. I'm putting down two barracks right here to um, build some spearmen. And uh, since we got all the relics, we're going to need a second monastery to put the other relics in. These trebuchets should be out any moment. Let's keep harassing with the uh, um, knights. Every time you do economic damage, you are just putting yourself further ahead. So, you can see he's rushing his military out to defend again, and we just pull back to where our keep is. And he's built a keep right here, which is one of his landmarks that we'll have to deal with, but um, it shouldn't be a problem. All right, we're going to start attacking his base with our uh, siege. I'm 
guys, ideally this keep could have been closer, but for the sake, sake of example, this is where the keep is this time. But uh, you can see I'm starting to run out of food sources on the map, so it's time to build farms in my base. And uh, I also have enough um, resources to go Imperial Age. So if I want to, I can build another keep right here called the Red Palace, which is insane. It is uh, the final French landmark. Meanwhile, I can make sure I grab all the blacksmith upgrades that I can afford. And uh, you'll notice I am now at population capacity, 200 out of 200. So at this point, I can only build new units when my other units die. Now, all you want to do here is defend your siege as you take and defend your villagers building the new keep and um, try to start taking out the opponent's base. And against a real opponent, they will generally start to uh, surrender at some point here soon. Not start to surrender, but surrender. And uh, once they come in for the attack, we'll just attack move. Garrison our villagers inside this keep, uh, the Red Castle, because it's extremely strong. From here, we can just work to end the game. Destroy everything in your opponent's base. Make sure that, you know, they can't just pump out another military. Make sure that they're not um, doing anything that will let them come back into the game. There's been too many times in a game where I let up pressure and uh, people end up coming back into the game when you feel like you should just win. So you don't want to go through that. You want to just keep... Keep... Extending your lead. You can notice he gets out a Manganel to deal with my archers. So I just send my knights to kill that Manganel as soon as possible. And um, you can even, at this point, start destroying houses if you want to. If it's a closer game. Because um, that way your opponent can't get out more, built more units. He will be housed. So... But, um, yeah, I'm just going to focus on the uh, landmarks and ending the game. So I think I've given you guys all the tips I can give you. If you are a new player, this is a great place to start. Um, as you can see, I'm getting out Spearmen to defend my siege. Um, if I wanted to, I could get a university, but I don't need to in this game to win the game. So, yeah, that's the gist of it, guys. From here, um, you have just the easy ability to just win the game. You can see he's only getting out one unit at a time, and that unit is going to die to my keep any time it tries to attack my siege. At this point, the game is over, and your opponent should forfeit. So, If not, though, and you need to manually end the game, then all you would need to do is destroy the third landmark. So we destroyed one here, we're destroying the second one, which is the town center. The third one is this white tower. Now, if you do need to be careful of it, because it's a keep, um, but... All you would need to do is place some towers over here to get vision, and then use your army to defend the trebuchets as your trebuchets destroy it. And that would end the game. So that's going to be it for my uh, beginner's guide, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have more questions, check out my stream on Twitch and ask questions. I'm happy to do game reviews. I'm happy to analyze your game and see why you lost. And um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other videos. Thanks so much.